on Rogue Traders tonight. A firm of locksmiths who take your front door apart when they just don't need to. Let's face it, that's silly. Locks are the key for one dodgy business who know that if you want to get at someone's cash, just follow the drill. This simple piece of wood, metal, or UPVC may not look like much, but it's an important instrument in the way the British legal framework operates. Because that is a front door, and whether you rent or whether you own, you get to decide what stays in and what stays out. It's a barrier that must be respected. You film it. It's a filter which allows you to decide whether you want to speak to Religious groups, political campaigners, and salespeople. What's it? I'm calling the police! Hello, officer? Yeah, yeah, he's off the telly. I don't know his name, no, big bloke. Leather jacket. Yeah? No? Six foot one? No, it's not Nick Knowles. I'd know Nick Knowles. Um... Imagine that somebody would be prepared to use this, the thing that's there to protect you, to harm you when you're at your most vulnerable. That is not on. Yeah, and he's going bald at the back. <clears throat> so anyone that comes to fix your front door had better be up to the task. Which brings us to AM London Locksmith Limited, a 24-hour operation nominally based in this building in central London. But clearly not. This is the address they give. But you can't fit vans and locksmiths and tools and all of that in there through the letterbox. It's a virtual office, and they're virtually not there. That's right, it's a P.O. box. The firm is directed by two men, Anna Tamir and Mayor Amzalag. They say they're French and German, and for all we know, they very well might be. What is clear? is that many of their customers report awful experiences. And many of those experiences share some common characteristics. Right, it's time to meet two such customers who have very similar stories. Let's compare notes. Hey, James, how are you? You all right? I'm very well, Good to what? see you. Hey, Dan, how Matt, are you? Matt, hi, good to see you. Good to see you. Why was it you needed a locksmith, James? We were going out uh, in the afternoon to a barbecue with friends, went to try and secure the, the lock and close it, and uh, the key would not move. Come out the flat, I've heard that fateful click behind me, left my keys behind. Did a quick Google search and tried to find a local locksmith, dialed the number, spoke to a lady, you said, good news, we have someone out in an hour. It says clearly on the advert, £59. So I stress that on the phone, look, it's £59. The locksmith's on the way. So what happened when he turned up? He's turned up in his own car, it appears. Uh, no branding, no logo, no uniform. And he's done the whole, oh, this is one of the most difficult ones to do. This is going to be a tough old job. A guy, I can't remember what his name, I think it was Peter, has a look at the lock, plays around with it, figures out within a minute or two that the key's not going to go anywhere, and then immediately goes out of the car, gets a drill, comes back and just kind of drills the lock out straight away. No delicate instruments, no fine techniques, nothing like that. None of that, it's literally straight, it's all like uh, a uh, sledge having a crack a nut. He's drilling away, he's hammering, he's chiseling, so it's at this point he's decided to tell me it's going to be £600. What? Yeah. Eventually he presents me with an invoice of about £550 for, like, no more than half an hour's work. Whoa! Did you have any idea how much it was going to cost beforehand? Not at all. I'm worried at this point because I don't trust him. Uh, he knows where I live, he knows my door's open. And that's the thing about locksmiths, it's not like other traders. They know where you live and how to get into your home. You need to be able to trust your locksmith, and clearly AM locksmiths are not making the cut. You want to know what a real locksmith looks like? <sighs> Join me as we go through the keyhole. I'm at the home of a top secret headquarters where age-old learning is closely guarded. It's the Master Locksmiths Association, or MLA, to those in the know. Huh. OK, it's an industrial estate in rugby, and it's not that secret. But Gary Eckersall knows it all. He's not just a master locksmith. 
He's the one who teaches those in the guild how to pick, slip and shim locks. To the lock decoder, he's Yoda. Hey. Hello, Matt. Hi, nice to meet you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's a pleasure coming in. Yeah, let's do that. Good. Gary, why is it worth being careful about who you choose as a locksmith? Most people, when they call a locksmith, are quite vulnerable. They've either lost the keys, been burgled, so you have to be careful who you call. You've got to trust that person. It's a, it's a skilled profession. So that bond of trust is very important for customers? Absolutely. Well, a locksmith will look at the door, weigh up the situation, and come up with the best possible way of getting that person in the home or solving the problem, whatever it is, without destroying the lock first. What is the motto for the MLA? Skill and integrity. Because it could be skills before drills. Yeah, could be. <laughs> yes, it could be. Could you show me how to pick a lock? Yeah, certainly. This one here? Yeah, that one there. You ready? Yeah, no problem. OK. Wow! That is incredible. So, Gary, could you show me how to pick a lock? No. Later on in the programme, Gary is going to set up a fault in a lock to test the AM London locksmith way of doing things. Will they use the techniques of a master locksmith or the tools of the blacksmith? We'll be going at it hammer and tongs in a short while. But first, we're checking out the front door eyesore AM London Locksmith Limited. They're virtually based in central London, but actually based somewhere else entirely. They have a habit of using cordless battery-powered tools. So we're about to go undercover to find out if we get fully charged. We're on the doorstep with our undercover team member, Tony. Why is he called Tony? Because he's Tony gone and snapped his key off in the lock. Our master locksmith, Gary, reckons it's an easy fix. And these are the tools that a locksmith will have. is a small rake pick or a dragging pick. We would insert that into the lock, grab the key. I've got the broken key out. Now, what we would do is we'd insert the broken key back again into the lock and using the remainder of the broken key, insert that very gently and open the door. Very simple. That was quick. OK, so we've seen how it should be done. Now it's time to call out AM locksmiths. I've basically locked myself out of my house. I've snapped my key. Don't worry, we can help you. Do you have any idea how okay. much it will cost? Yeah, so it should be £59 to be straightforward entries. Brilliant, that's great. So far, so good. Remember, £59 call-out is what it says on the website. With Gary safely in the hide, AM locksmiths arrive. Hello, mate. Now, will he try and pick it as any decent locksmith should? This one, yeah? Yeah. The only I'll... thing I'll have to delete out okay. Rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Mm -hmm. The only solution now is to drill it out and replace it with a new one. OK. I can't do anything. That's the only option? Yes, the only option. That's the only option? Really? To drill, um... it will cost you £80. Instead of 59 normal opening. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure then, yeah. Yeah, would you like the same yield? I think so, yeah. Yeah, but it's a bit more expensive yield, that's why. Oh, okay, how much is it? This is 140. Wow! It's only about 10 pounds a buy. <laughs> Following the drill, he sets about replacing the lock that could have been fixed with a simple pick. It's a bit crazy what he's doing. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Time for the final bill. 140 plus 80 the opening. Uh -huh. And plus, I'll not charge you 60, the fitting, I'll charge you only 40. Plus, 20 VAT. 312. Oh, it's, it's more than I was expecting. What? 312 pounds? I can't believe what that guy's just charged there. That's an absolute blatant rip-off. That's 300. And let me... I've just got a 10 in my wallet. So, a crazy rip-off, says our man Gary. It seems like the AM way of doing things is alive and well. But what about the people behind the business? Yes, Anna Tamir and Mayor Amzalag. Is this just a one-off or is it company policy? Clearly, 
We need to see another locksmith, and that means another house. This time, Amy's in the house, and Gary set an even simpler fault. It's called a turned curtain in locksmith speak, and it's even easier to fix than a broken key. To rectify it, a small screwdriver in the keyway, turn it back again, you feel it click, key goes back in, and you're back in again. Simple. Easy McPeasy face. I'm sure even AM Locksmith have got this one. Hi, Peter. Ah, oh, Peter, the same locksmith our complainants from earlier, Dan and James, had. Hello. And he's brought a friend. Hi. Your lock is faulty, man. It's faulty. And the only solution I must destroy the lock. How much will it cost? It's 110 just to open. 110. 110? It's a two second job with a screwdriver. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a simple screwdriver. I can see your keys. If you want to, you want to stay in the car, you're OK? Oh, no, I'm good here. Uh, yeah, I'm actually quite warm. Well, that's a bit odd. I don't think he wanted to see what he's doing. I just want to see. I think he opened it with the key when he turned the curtain back. Uh, we'll come back to that later, Gary. Meanwhile, Peter hits the power tools. And pixelate. We're in. But with our lock unnecessarily destroyed, what do we do now? Can you put a new one on? Yeah, if you want. A basic lock, it's 69 pounds, medium one. Uh, I might go for the cheapest one, I think. It's up to you, man, but I, I must tell you, I don't you think... provide with warranty. Would you say medium is good, or would yes, you say... I'll go for that one, yeah, no then, problem, please. But I'm cringing here listening to this. It's off with the old, on with the new, and Gary's not happy. You should never force a lock in the door like that, anyway. I hope he's not going to wreck the frame. This is a terrible job. This is a really, really, really bad job. Not just that, Gazington. It's a bad job that didn't need doing. Uh, what's he doing? What, what's he doing? Peter seems to be having some problems. Because he's a new one, you know? Yeah. And he's not going to fix the same with the, the old one, yeah? OK. Oh. Oh, I could cry. <laughs> and the total is 279 plus the VAT yeah. is 334. He put dick tape into shame, this fella. 300. Thank you. Bye. I can't believe what I've just seen there. Just can't believe it. Peter and his pal are gone. Gary goes to the front door to check his earlier suspicion. Proof that they, they actually had the lock open before he drilled it because the bolt's in the unlocked position and there's the cutting mark so you know that the lock was actually unlocked when he drilled it. So it's a blatant rip-off. He's just drilled it for the sake of drilling. It's an absolute blatant con. And to fix their damage, we were quoted over £400. So two jobs complete and 100% record of rip-off. They come, they drill, they overcharge, they leave. Yes, time to slam AM London Locksmith Limited, run by Anna Tamir and Mayor Amzalag, and not to be confused with companies which may have the same or similar names in other parts of the country. We've got an idea where this one might be, though. North London holds the key. Talking of which, AM London Locksmith Limited are doing a bit of picking themselves. Well, they should be. They can get through doors like most of us could by destroying metal and wood with a drill to leave a hole where a professional locksmith would leave it intact. It's time to find out what's behind the door where their boss is hiding. AM London Locksmith. The only solution now is to drill it out and replace it with a new one. A firm who, for no good reason, love to drill and then bill big time. And the total is 279 plus the VAT yeah. is 334. Directors Anna Tamir and Mayor Amzalag are the men behind the business. Their website says AM Locksmith is based in central London, but it's a P.O. box. We spent weeks trying to track down their hard-to-find headquarters, but we kept picking.
So, exciting news, ladies and gentlemen. The real headquarters of AM Locksmiths is here where we find ourselves in Hendon, North London. And we're going to wait and hope that Anna Tamia, or Anaya Tamia, is going to come to work today so we can talk to him about the way his locksmiths operate and all the money he's making from it. So, we're off. It's electric doors. Mind yourselves. Very posh. We don't tend to give diary invites. We just have to park up and wait. And sometimes, you know, we get nothing. But suddenly, we spot Anna. Anna, Matt all right, BBC Rogue Traders. Hello. This is what it feels like to feel vulnerable and uncomfortable in front of your own front door, which is an experience that your customers at AM Locksmiths would know very, very well. OK. When you send somebody like Peter to go and deceive them and con them about work that doesn't need doing to their door. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, OK, so you have had many, many complaints about the way he operates. Can you give me an example? For yeah, because we filmed him doing exactly that. It was a turned curtain in a lock, which you'll know as a locksmith, this is something that's very easy to fix. It can be fixed in seconds. He fixed okay. it and then drilled again after that. So you'll understand that's not that... something that I heard about, but I'm willing to check. Most of our clients are very happy with our service. Of course, You can you're... also check it online, of course, in any business, there's also clients that are not happy with service. Okay, so we um, called out two, yeah. and both of them did unnecessary work. In Peter's work, it was willfully deceptive what he did. I'm, I'm, I'm doubt about it, but I, will, I want to okay, check Okay, Annie, what are you going to do I about say, it? I'm going to check it with the guy, and of course, if something that, like, that happened, we're going to get rid of it. £59 charge, call-out charge is, is what you maintain, okay? Yeah. In fact, it feels to me like people are charging whatever they think they can get away no, with. Not really. The markup on the individual items can you show is me hundreds uh, can of you show me specific? It's all there right in the letter. Take a look. Are you going to give us a full explanation? And we're going to expect Once we check it, we're yes, going to expect course. full refunds for those customers who come it. to us afterwards yes. and say AM Locksmiths did the same to us. Yeah. You're going to honour that. I'll expect you to honour that. We'll check it. I'll expect you. you. I will expect you to refund all of those people. We'll check. And of course, if clients. Um, Something did and did wrong. Can you tell me why it is you use this address and yet use a virtual address in Old Street to protect we your identity here. here? We recently moved here. Oh, but you'll be you'll be putting this one, 399 yes, Prospect yes, yes, House, yes, on the website so that they can I get in contact will... with you directly. We'd also like to speak to Mayor and talk yeah. to him about how he can sit there taking the profits of this kind of dishonest behaviour. If you can let him know that we'd yeah. like to talk to him about it as well as a director of the firm like yourself. As you understand, that's where the buck ultimately stops. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Anna Tamir of AM, he's the A, we presume, of AM Locksmith. The M is Mayor Amzalag. And um, there you go, there was a door that was briefly open and then closed again. Not unlike what we saw with Peter. Well, since then, Anna Tamir has told us that as an up-and-coming company, he uses subcontractors to help meet demand, but he admits some are occasionally unscrupulous and he's had to terminate his relationship with many of them, including, he says, the two they sent out to us. He says many customers have had exemplary service and when mistakes have happened, they've been dealt with and money has been refunded, as happened with one of the cases we'd featured who'd had a partial refund before our investigation began. He defends using a virtual address, saying many other companies do the same, and says his co-director, Mayor Amzalag, is not involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business and only handles the company's IT. Oh, and he wanted us to know that he's a big fan of the show, which is just a bit strange. <laughs> <laughs>